Prints for my first collection, edition, sign, and ship right to your front door are on sale now on my Shopify. Use promo code CoreyPhoto50 to save $50 and get free shipping. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to be retouching five images submitted by my YouTube subscribers and Instagram followers to show you how I use the same workflow tools that are explained in my previous videos and why I make the choices I make. So without any further delay, let's just jump right into it. We got a great submission by Devanshu. Let's open it right up. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of clarity to it, but not a lot. All right, first thing, throw on your crop. See, it's a little tight here, but I love that you can see the hands. The crop really did bring it together. Um, you can see that he's quite, not quite in the center of the frame. So we got to do just a little bit of jigging. I'm going to duplicate this layer, make sure that it's straight and then get him in the center. That's really cool. I'm actually going to make this crop just a little bit smaller. Make it really fill in there. And now I'm just going to use a little bit of liquefying to get this corner a bit more straight. Simple. Super cool. I actually don't like this down here. Uh, I just think it should be a little tighter. Make sure I get this right. And then back into liquefy. This is just to get my, just to make sure that it's very symmetrical, very straight. That's nicer. All right, view, clear guides. All right, let's start our treatment on, or our, our layers. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, I see that this is far too bright. I'm gonna bring those down. Make sure that it's just a little bit more balanced in terms of the hot points. So again, low opacity brush, something like a 7% and just paint it in. You can see it's coming in nice and gently. I just like to dot it in, small brush and chip away at it. We'll be doing some dodging and burning on this one as well. See these fingertips just blow out a little bit as well. Could probably go a little higher here, somewhere around 13%. This is helping a lot though, especially in here. You just want the whites to not be blown out. You want it to be just on the fringe. You want detail everywhere. Biggest thing in an amateur photographer is the blacks are too black and the whites are too white. So you really want to just bring it back and get that perfect exposure, even if you weren't perfectly exposed. Just looking at the raw material here and that is blown out. So what I can do is actually take some some detail from this, this finger here. Just use my S tool, and just simply like that. And what I'm gonna do is drop the opacity so it's just barely there. Turn my mask on, I'm gonna delete it. And then I'm just gonna paint in this fingertip uh, with a full opacity brush. Look at that, fingertip. And you see that's a little too wide. So what I'm gonna do here is use my liquify tool, shift apple X. And I'm just gonna stretch this fingernail down just a little bit. That way you don't get any interference. That may look weird right now, but as you paint it in, it looks more and more natural. Helps a lot. You can see a little bit of a mistake right here. That's why I always like flipping the, uh, the layer on and off. You can really see where your mistakes were. You can even see it's a little bit too much right there. And that even might be a little too much. Again, I, I love to live in the opacities. You just want enough detail. So now we have detail in there. And I'm just gonna go back up one more time and chip away at this a little bit more. You don't want your eye to come to this hand. You want your eyes to be here. So I'm going to chip away at this again, probably later on near the end of the image. Let's go to the brightness, make his eyes pop. 
another little chip away again this is the, it's such gentle massaging that you need to do but I mean it already looks miles ahead and now I'm not gonna do too much skin cleanup I mean this is a beautiful little kid I don't want to do anything crazy but the things that distract you are these little white dots and just the little uh, tiny little distractions so I'm just gonna speed this up and get them out of here for you now these wrinkles look cool, but they're just a little harsh. So what I'm gonna do is just minimize them a little bit. And the best way to do that is A, to get rid of them completely. So they're completely gone. And then we just bring the opacity back. I don't want him to look at this photo and say, where are these wrinkles? These are me, where did they go? what you do want to do is minimize them so they're not too heavy so you can see them all there and then you just take the opacity and just bring it back just slightly so you can just slightly see them so they're there they're just minimized cool dodge and burn you just want to take where it's light and just darken it a little bit. All this does is smooth out the complexion, make the shadows fall a little, a little bit easier. I'm not doing anything crazy here. This isn't a crazy skin retouch. Again, it's just balancing the shadows and making your gradients a little smoother. And that's all you wanna do. Take the harshness away, a little bit of the bite. While I'm here, I can do some of these fingertips and some of these palms. See, it's a little bit messier up here. I'm gonna go in a little heavier where it's just a little bright. You see that this color kind of shifted, um, but I will go and attack that at the end. Right now, we're just getting everything balanced and, and nice. And there's a big difference already. I don't wanna mess with the child's texture too much, but this is pretty cool. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really try to balance out these hands. I see that this hand looks a little just too heavy. So what we're gonna do is just take another curves layer, bring it down in the high points. So it comes down a little bit and just paint it in gently. And you can see that the hand actually looks a little blotchy. So what I wanna do with that is just go back to my dodge and burn layer underneath and just smooth that out a little bit. So I'm gonna start with my lightness tool because it's actually the, the darks that are a little blotchy. Nothing too crazy, just don't linger on it, just take a little bit of time and go around. You can see a couple more little details. It's a little too light on his lip here. That's really cool, I'm gonna add one more contrast layer. You see it's just getting a little yellow. So even though my saturation is down a little bit, I'm just gonna come up here to the yellows and just bring it down a tiny, tiny bit. I'm also gonna add a color balance layer because you can see the blues will get rid of the red. And, sorry, the cyans will get rid of the red and the blues will get rid of the yellow. This would actually also make a really cool black and white image. But I think the colors are, are important. So the next thing I'm going to do is take another hue and saturation layer and bring it right down. This is more so for the hand up in the top corner. I just don't want it to stick out too much, you know? I don't want it to be too yellow. So using a brush, just paint that in. And that looks like I went a little too far. So I'll just bring that back a little bit so it's more even. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna put these all in one layer, flip it on and off. And that just looks a little too harsh, so my favorite thing is to just bring all of these layers down a little bit. Just say 70. I'm gonna add my grain to it. Really cool. Add a curves layer just to bring everything up, smooth everything out. Doesn't need to be that much. I'm gonna add another grain layer because it's so close up, it can handle it. Maybe bring this down just a little bit. There you go, big difference. The crop really did most of the work. Love that. So what I'm actually gonna do here is add a curves layer and start a vignette. Bring it right down, delete it. You want a nice, soft, big brush and then just paint it in softly along the edges. Nothing crazy. It's actually gonna be very hard to tell in this image because it's so busy. 
but it's just gonna lead your eye right to it. Right to the eyes, that is. Subtle. I'm gonna do one more. Just to make the edges a little bit darker, to accentuate it. So same size brush, a little bit more density, and just in the corners here. There you go, vignette on and off. It did make a, a huge difference when you flip everything on and off. I think the crop did the most here. But it's a beautiful image. No distractions, nice and clean. Save. All right, who do we got next? Gianluca. Nice raw image here. It's gonna bump the clarity a little bit. So this one's cool. You see if I add the crop, I can't really get it centered because there just isn't uh, enough space. So it has to sit sideways. So I'll show you what I do for that. Just make this a little bit bigger. Just make sure she's in the center. Then I throw my crop on. And then it's nice and centered. Then what you do is you duplicate the background. Hold your marquee tool. Apple T, hold shift. Just drag that right over. Now do we still like this crop? Or did you like it better like this? I think I still like it in the center. Because there's a big line coming down, you want to make sure that it is perfectly straight, which it looks like it's just slightly off. So you hold Apple T and push this little thing up here, which is a free transform tool. And then you can just push it right in and now it's perfect. So it's a nice image, treatment setup. This is a little busy for me. I would have liked it to be a little bit more simple because now your eye is coming in here. Not much you can do about it because of the flyaways. It's just gonna have to be part of the image. I'm gonna add my treatment. And let's just start with the skin and the fix up. So I know this is nice and glittery, but it's the big ones that distract me. So I'm just gonna take these big ones away. The subtle things are really nice. And then let's just jump right into the skin cleanup. This looks more like a fashion image so we can take a little step further. But just really focus on spending time just massaging and cleaning the skin. I'm gonna speed this up for your sake. So one thing I come across quite often is actually the kind of messiness on the forehead. As you can see, this is almost impossible to clean up. You can do some small things like getting rid of these distractions, but this is just impossible to clean up. If, even if I spent the time here, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's just something you'll have to have an eye for when you're shooting. So some things you can't retouch out are uh, big windows like this because of the flyaways. Even these flyaways are a little bit difficult because of how busy it is. But let's see if I can at least do some help here. So just take my brush tool, get a good color. Dot it in. Small opacity brush, that way it's just a little bit more subtle when you try to paint it back. And don't be afraid to come right into the hair because we're going to get rid of that in a little bit. Same with your other brush tool, get this color going. Keep that line. And just dot it in. And we don't need this other line here, so we can go like this. And now using this, we can do the same thing here. Using your stamp tool, bring it up here so you can get that line gradient. Get your mask. And now you can actually see how messy it was, but you can, now you can just paint it right in with a full opacity brush. Nice and simple. Flyaways are tough though. This is one of the key things that you really have to be on your game when you're shooting. Flyaways is, it's just so much easier to take the one second and fix on set rather than spending a tremendous of time in post trying to fix it. I mean, that did a big difference, but it's still, it's very messy. So it is very hard to, you know, make it look not messy. 
Even that, when the flyaways are gone, it still looks a little bunchy. So what I'm gonna do is just lower the opacity a little bit, just so it, if you do look in, you can see that it, all that information is still there. All right, move on to the dodge and burn. So this is just about cleaning up shadows. So let's dive in. Just taking your time to massage it. This is not really a process you can rush. It takes a long time no matter what. And as you learn and do this over and over and over again, you will speed up. But again, it's not something you ever want to rush. It's just something you want to settle in and just get used to doing. You know, it's a little messy up here, so all you can really do is darken it. Just let the shadows do their thing. Switch over the your dodge tool. Get rid of all these unpleasant shadows. And that's pretty good. I know I'm gonna have to clean up this section here, but I'm gonna let my contrast there go up first before I make anything drastic, because this is a little bit messy. Yeah, the light is creating some weird shadows, so you do want to get rid of it. So let's see how we can get rid of it. So this looks a little too heavy, uh, but we're going to start with brightening it up where it should be. You can actually, because it is so bright, you can actually use the brightness from here, which looks good. And now we'll use our curves layers underneath. Well, that was way too much. Friendly reminder to uh, adjust the opacities. Even this is looking great. Let this light hit pop a little bit more. And then with my curves layer, I'm gonna go in right in and just get rid of this. Simplify it. Look how much nicer that looked. Again, this is high contrast. I don't know if you want it to be that high contrast. So I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of detail in here. But it helps a lot. It turns it into a nice high key image. But again, you gotta work with what you have. I know this is really messy, so you really want the, the eye to be hitting this face right here. So I'll turn the saturation on. Went a little too far. Add my color balance, just to give it a little zip. This might go have gone a little too much. So it's just, again, constant refining. I'm gonna adjust my crop just a little bit. I see this is a little distraction under here. This can help get rid of some of that blue. But because there is blue, I do like a lot of blues in the whites because this it can help with the, the amount of blue coming through this window. So I'm not gonna do it to her skin, 100% here. I'm just gonna do it to the background. That's very subtle. It's heavy here where there's a little bit more shadows. So that's way too much. So I'm just gonna bring it back using the opacity. But I think that helped. The blue coming in here really makes that window have a purpose. And I can also see that I see a little bit of distraction here. Even though this is very messy, you can still see some things pop up. You can see right in here and in here that there's a little bit of distraction and that your eyes come. If It's almost like white noise. If there's white noise, it's not distraction, but if you can hear a pop within that white noise, it becomes distraction. That's the same thing with this hair. This hair is white noise. Any little thing that pops out, you don't want. Same with this kind of stuff. Just don't want anything to be... You just don't want your eye to be going to these distractions. And you mean, it's a big difference between starting and finishing you can see how much that helped in the around the mouth that the lighting made it a lot more flattering a lot cleaner got rid of the distractions but again if you this was your image you'd really want to go back and try this again i'm gonna actually come in here turn off all my layers one last uh, final liquify oh, i'm gonna turn the crop off i'm gonna do one final liquify because i did notice this is just a little annoying so what I'm gonna do is come in here, just make it less apparent. Just made that a lot smoother and a lot nicer. Here you have it, add our grain, add one more. A little too much, but I love what it's doing in here. 
That's really cool. And it helps her face a lot. Add a curve. Let's just see if I can bring this down just a little bit so the treatment's not so intense. And there you have it. Save. Who we got next? James Watson, a nice uh, portrait on white here. So this is cool. I'm gonna show you how to clean up this background. These shadows are a little too muddy. Open. So normally I, on an image like this, I would clean the background, but I actually like how dirty this is. I've actually always wanted to do something nice and dirty like that, but you can see small things like a plastic on the chair makes a big difference. So what I'm gonna do is just widen this a little bit to make sure that it's wide enough for my four by five crop since that's for Instagram and mostly web. Make sure that my crop is white by pushing on the mask. You just, to toggle in between this, it's just the X button. So now let's get this crop right. So this looks nice and balanced. You can see this image wasn't long enough, so or wide enough, I should say. So this is how we bring in a little bit more. I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Go as close as you can to the subject without touching them, and you're holding Command T and then the Shift button while you drag it across, and you're holding Shift Apple X, and you are going to just bring this apart. And to get rid of this, you're gonna do the same thing on the top. See a little bit of a wrinkle there. Just gonna do that. And now to even this out, I don't really like that. I'm just gonna select this part of the color. And with a big brush, soft brush, I'm just gonna paint in, oh, this is 100%. You want something around 12, 14. Just make this background nice. Doesn't matter about the ground, the ground has its own thing, its own style. You could do this for the, for the bottom here, but that's just too messy. It's just almost impossible to clean up. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that the background is super clean. Messy floor, that's a cool little steez. And just paint it in, dot it around, and then we'll get it off of her in just a second. Make sure the corners are nice. Balanced. That's just a perfectly clean background. Huge difference. Add our mask, and now we're just gonna paint it away. Full opacity brush. I'm just going nice and gently. You can be kind of crude here around the flyaways because we're gonna come in and massage those separately. All right, cool. So now what you wanna do with the flyaways First you want to actually want to double check, hit the for, the backslash tool. You can actually see uh, where your mask was and if you missed anything. This is perfect. Now you want to come in here and just massage it in a little better. I wouldn't get too rid of the flyaways too much. If you do want them, you do still want it to look natural. You're just doing a small, wide brush to be kind of as crude as possible. But that looks way better. Way better background. Nice and clean. No sensor dust spots. No weird wrinkles in the background. It's just a lot smoother. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more background layer. Get your crop off. Shift, Command, Option, N, E. Crop back on. And I'm just going to liquefy her silhouette a little bit, just to make it a little nicer. Come right in here. And it's just so it's not so wrinkly, not so distracting. Just nice and simple. All right, let's throw our treatment on. Whoa, crazy. If you have a treatment action like I set up and this happens sometimes, it just means that your artboards were backwards. So all you gotta do is make sure they're black, go to your brightness and go to your dark and you're back to normal. So, what I'm gonna do is just start with the skin. And see these legs are a little blotchy? You can see some cleanup here, so I think I might just start with that stuff. So I'm gonna need two more. This is for 
the background stuff. You can see a hair here. You can see something messy here. So instead of using a new one, I'm just going to use this one. Almost perfect. Not quite. Perfect. This is a little bit of an annoyance. And take a really small brush and just even it out. There you go. And now I'm gonna do one for the legs. So the legs are blotch, a little bit blotch and a little bit of a pain to fix. So what I do is I just almost turn this in, whole thing into plastic. I get rid of all of it. And then I drop the opacity down. So just try not to get any repeats, any marks like that. And just try to get this using your J healing brush. Just really paint it in. And I'll show you what you do afterwards. So give me a second. You can see a big difference here. But now all I want to do, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll lower the opacity. You see blotchiness is a little bit disappeared. But now watch when you drop the opacity down to say somewhere around, around 50%. You can see it just helps that blotchiness significantly. And you're not losing any skin texture or anything like that. It's just a slight move ahead. And then some of this we'll get rid of with dodge and burn, but let's go into the skin here. So she's got amazing skin. Not too much clean up here. Let's just dive right in. And this girl's skin is great. So now dodge and burn. Start with the, the burn. Get rid of all these highlights. Again, just massage it in. Take your time. Over the dodge tool, you can see that it actually is getting a little blotching here. The, when you're in the lower mids and the shadows, it gets a little bit more difficult. All you gotta do is stay focused, steady nerves, nice and calm. Don't get too agitated and just chip away at it. You see that there's actually a lot of back and forth that goes here. Usually I use two monitors so I can see to the right, but it's hard to record two monitors, but you can see the blotchiness in here when you, when you zoom out. Let's go back into it. I mean, that's a big difference in the face, nice and smooth. Her skin was already great to begin with, so it didn't need a lot. And now let's go down to the legs. And this you don't have to spend too much time on. You just don't want it to be distracting. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just chip away at the spots that are a little bit more blotchy than others. And then use your dodge tool. And gently, just kind of paint in where you see it's dark. But you don't have to spend too much time because hopefully no one's looking here. Everyone's going to be looking at the eyes. You can see this makes a big difference. You can see where your mistakes are when you flip it on and off, which is a main reason I do it a lot. At our contrast, well, it's a big move. You can see how dark she got. So I'm actually gonna brighten this a little bit, just until it looks overall balanced, and then I'll use my brightness curves. And again, if you, haven't, if you don't know what this is, that's just me making a curve bright and one making her curve lower. Now I'm just painting it in under the contrast move. Low opacity brush and just dot it in. Ooh. You can see how it really bleeds over to the background so you want to be careful. Something like this makes an inc a crazy move. If you wanted to get rid of that and make it not work, all you would do is you would work in 16 bit but we're working in 8-bit today. All, it doesn't need to be too bright, but again, you just want detail. It can be dark, dark's cool. It can be underexposed in the blacks, but you do want detail, so if you do zoom in, or it's printed, you just don't want it to be inky and black. It's just an improperly exposed photo. See a little mark here I can get rid of. I like this shadow on this side of her face, so I'm gonna leave that, and all we need to really do is brighten up the eyes. Maybe a little bit around the mouth. You want the face to glow, but the forehead is a little 
bright for me. You can even add a little bit in here just to add the accentuation of the shadow. And I'm actually gonna make her legs a little brighter because that'll help the blotchiness. So I want it to bleed over to the background so make your brush a little smaller. Oops. All right, so she's still a little bright, especially on the bridge of her nose. And now what I wanna do is because I brightened it and darkened it, I just wanna go back and revisit the dodge and burn just to make sure I didn't mess anything up. See a little bit of dark blotch on her face here, or forehead rather, and, and a little bit in her nose. And then just get rid of some of the blotchiness, just bring your J tool in. And on things that the dodge and burn can't fix, the trusty J tool healing brush will come in and help you out. It's a huge difference. So now what I'm gonna do is add my hue and saturation. It's a little too far. The colors in this are, are great. So I'm gonna add my curves layer. I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit. Really cool. Now I'm gonna add my grain. Ah, it looks amazing on the background. I'm just going to lower it a little bit. There you have it. Nice finished image. You can see it's miles ahead from the original. See her jaw actually looked a little wide here. That's not because of her. That's just an awkward angle. And our shadows really fix that slender face. Legs look better. Background's fixed and clean. Great. Finished image. Save. We got next. Joseph. Cool, cool image. I love it. A little bit of clarity to it. Tiny bit of sharpness. Not a lot though. Never want to go too far with the sharpness. So these flyaways are, are really a mess. You can see from the, the first one, I said the easiest thing to fix on the flyaways. So this is going to be actually really hard to fix. Not sure what I'm going to do. It's not our crop. So one thing that can probably help us a lot is Getting rid of it and making it just a tighter portrait. The way we can just trim the top of her head off and that can fix some of the flyaways. Ideally, I would love to be somewhere around here with the white space, but if the flyaways and this such a busy background, it's gonna be really hard. So we're gonna do something like this. Make sure she's straight. And generally I hit the background first to fix any imperfections, but I think I'm gonna spend the time trying to get rid of these flyaways. So let's see how I'm gonna do that, because right now I don't know. See, if this was a normal background, you just paint it in, but you have a flower in the background, which makes it a little bit harder. Is it as easy as something that's cropping out? You don't want that, because the background's so nice. You want that kind of floral pattern. All right, let's see if I can use this flower in the background to do something. So control C, control V, make this much bigger. Go to the opacity, just try and make it around the same size. Delete it. And then let's see if I can paint this in. You just need enough for the crop. You don't need to go too much wider. So let's see if I do 100, what happens? That did help. So that helped tremendously. I was lucky. So I'll just fill it in here just in case we decide we want to go wider. Just the inside of the flower. Really nice. Curves. Let's just make this a little brighter so it's not so dark and weird. It looks a little better like the original one. Amazing. All right, that's only one side. How do I do it on the other side? So maybe I can take this. So again, same thing. Use your marquee tool. Push M. I'm going to take this. Control C, Control V. Let's bring it up here. See what I can do with this. Turn my crop on. How 
big can I make this? I'm gonna just try and make this big. And then we'll just be paint dotting it in. Delete this with the mask, same thing. So what I'm gonna do with this actually is just darken it a little bit. Kind of the opposite is of what I did on the other side. Then I can also take another big soft brush like this. Just dot this in. Do the same thing. And then just lower the opacity of this one so it's just a hint. You can probably clean this up a little better. Yeah, there you go. Just a little hint. I mean, that's a huge difference. And now I can fix some of the flyaways. Uh, just the big ones. I mean, this is a, a little bit sloppy, so there's no way you can, you know, make it look perfect. You just kind of have to roll with it. As long as they're not crazy along the side of the head, I think that helps a lot. But again, you're just simplifying things so you can see what a difference that made, especially up in the sides. All right, so now let's add our treatments. Let's add our layers. Get rid of this. Take these off. Do some skin cleanup. Again, if it's not there in three months, don't get rid of it. Just get rid of the blotchiness, the blemishes, and a couple crazy flyaways. You'll see when you start retouching and start doing your own images how important flyaways are and how important a hairstylist actually is to be on set and look for things like that. She's got good skin, it's pretty straight on. So these little flyaways at the top, I don't actually mind. They're kind of little baby hairs, which are cute. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of these rough, rough patches and eye patches up in here. See some of these hairs really stand out? That's really just the ones you want to get rid of. The ones that really stand out. If your eye goes to it, get rid of it. It's about finding a similar spot in the hair that you can mimic. So this is one of the hardest images to do, one with a lot of flyaways, because it can eat up so much time. I'm not trying to spend four or five hours on this image, because if I were to do this properly, get rid of all of this, you could spend that amount of time and it still wouldn't look right. Something would just be slightly off. Nothing will beat uh, preparation on set. So I'm just doing a rough, like this is still a little bit messy, but I mean, if I were to do this properly and go all the way in here, it's gonna be hours of work. But what I'm gonna try and do is just darken it down later. But for now, let's get into the dodge and burn. So big difference here. Again, you're just getting rid of the complexion and making it a little smoother, which helped a lot. This is a little messy here. I'm gonna do something called a, a powder puff, which is new layer and sample with your stamp tool. Bring the opacity right down. Smaller brush and just dot it in. Almost like it is powder and you're just puffing it in. Nothing crazy, not a lot, but you can see that helped such a tremendous amount. Just, it is like using a little powder brush. And all that does is smooth it out just a little bit. Bring it down. Now add our treatments. You see that was a little too much and you just have to balance it out a little bit more. So we'll start with the eyes. Whoa, not a full brush. Let's go to 12. Dot it in around the eyes. You can see that darkening it helped the flyaways up there a little bit. Balance the background. Balance our hair down here. Balance inside the flower. Her lips got a little too muddy. We'll strip up the nose, a little bit under the eye, dash on the forehead. And now, one more of this side. Really cool. 
and add just another little one just for a tiny little bit more zip. And then hue and saturation, bring that down. I'm gonna add a color balance, get rid of some of the reds, get rid of some of the yellows. It just, I mean, that helps such an, a large amount just to get rid of the reds and bring the color tone a little bit nicer. You turn this into a new layer and just see how that looked. I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit. Somewhere around 80%. Add my grain. Uh, the grain looks great. So what I'm gonna do now actually is just take this one that I made a little darker and just dot it in here. Cause this helps getting rid of flyaways too, what you can't see. So that helped a tremendous amount. So if you look at the befores and afters, the, the flyaways were, were a huge issue and I didn't really know what I would do, but after a little bit of massaging and some trickery with lights and shadows, we have a, a phenomenal portrait here at the end. Safe. All right, last one from Kim. Let's throw this up. So this is, was an issue I had at the beginning of my photography career is I didn't have a seamless big enough to go to the edges. So throw a, a crop on. And we're gonna do pretty much what we did in a couple images ago. We'll just extend the background. We're gonna make this nice and clean. So duplicate this, straighten it out. The seamless helps to get it straight. And then just using your marquee tool as close as you can to the subject, stretch it over. So simple. Same thing on this side, stretch it out. Very simple. And now the background is so clean that I do actually want to clean this up. So I'm just going to select a chunk of the background uh, by holding option click on your brush tool. And then with a big soft brush, doesn't have to be perfect, but just paint it in with a nice big brush. If there's a huge image, this could take a while just because it's so such a big move with the brush. That's really all you want. You don't want to make it perfect. You still like the shadows and the gradients that are there. I mean, even this is good enough. And then we can clean up those big messy spots after the fact. So I had a mask here. Capacity at 100, and then just paint away. This is where your drawing gets really good. Um, some people rotate the canvas. I've even done that in a previous landscape video. You really don't want to do that. You really want to get good at drawing from all angles. You can be a little bit crude here because there's a shadow, so you can bleed over a little bit. Make it more natural like that and then be harsh on the edges in the right spots. Flip it on and off, make sure there's nothing left on the boot. You can see there is. I mean, that's made a huge difference. So now let's just go in and clean the little spots. It makes it much easier to clean. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, I mean, you can go that extra step, but I just want it to be Again, distraction free. I don't mind this. Seamlesses get dirty. Some people like how it looks. I don't mind how it looks when it's a little dirty, but I mean, this makes a huge difference. Looks like it was only stepped on a couple times. And now we have this perfectly clean image. One thing I wanna do fix is, Shift Command N is her silhouette. You can see this gets a little Annoying. So one thing that helps a tremendous amount is coming in and just getting rid of this with a small brush. So get rid of the, the little imperfections first and then we'll do bigger moves. You want to start with your small moves first. And then we'll go work in the shape. So this is really just cleaning it up. Nice and smooth. You have to be good at making the the brush smaller, bigger, so my hand never leaves the, uh, the bracket keys. Takes a lot of practice to get good with liquify. You can mess it up really easily. 
You can see this is already helping the silhouette a lot. You can even help it out on this side. These aren't too bad because you can see the wrinkles. But even a big brush helps a lot. This is actually part of the dress, so I don't mind it as much. And you can see that made a massive difference in terms of shape and just cleaning up the silhouette. All right, let's throw our treatment layers on. Cool. So I'm gonna start with the brightness and contrast because her skin looks immaculate. So I'm just gonna work on getting some more detail in this dress with a small brush. I mean, that's all you need to do, wow. And now I'm gonna take a curves layer because her face just looks a little blown out. Same with her hand, just painting back in. Her legs look perfect. And now we can start clean up. And her skin was so good, so I'm actually gonna drop this dodge and burn right down, nice and simply. I just see one last thing. Just a little cleanup. And then what I want to do is just get rid of some of these white spots. I'm going to add one more little zip layer, which is really nice. I really like how this is, the tone and everything is on the backdrop. So I'm, I'm still gonna add just a little bit of uh, color balance. Not a lot. I always do a little bit of cyan, a little bit of blue. And then I take my treatment layer and I'm just gonna bring it down to say 80%. I'm gonna add my grain. Looks a little heavy on the face, but no, I love it everywhere else. So all I'm gonna do is just take my erase tool Bring it down to say 15% and just click it twice. Then do the same thing on this one. Click it twice. I'm also gonna give her face just a little bit of a glow. Nothing crazy. Again, 20% is really nice. Just make the face glow. Perfect. And you have it, massive difference. Big silhouette change. Perfect background now, and you have yourself pretty much a perfect ecom shot. Uh, if you were doing ecom, you would want the bottom of the seamless to be a little bit cleaner, but you can see there are ways around it. Save. And there you have it, guys. Five completely unique and different photos. You see how I approached it. They look incredible. I'd like to thank Devanshu, Gianluca, James, Joseph, and Kim for submitting their photos. They look fantastic. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment, I always respond. And if you like this video, please smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. My name's Corey Vanderplu, at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Happy shooting.